All right, second video here on uh, getting into uh, integrating by partial fractions. So again, we're going to just keep going. You're going to do some problems here um, that are going to help get you ready to understand and be able to do partial fractions well. So uh, here I want you to find the derivative of ln of x minus 5. I could say it like this, or I could say y equals ln x minus 5 and ask you to find y prime. Go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, remember, when we do ln derivatives, it, the derivative of ln is 1 over of, where the of is that innards. So here I'm going to get x minus 5. There's no chain rule to worry about here because the derivative of the innards itself is 1. So I get that. That's my answer. All right, let's do another one like this. We're going to do the derivative with respect to x of, um, I'm going to use ln. I'm going to open a bracket just so you can distinguish. Open parentheses, x minus, or sorry, x plus 3, close open, x minus 2, close to the fourth, and then close bracket, close parentheses. Find the derivative of that. Remember, you have some rules about logs for ripping and smashing and plugging. You're going to use all those. Go ahead and hit pause. Here's your answer. So um, remember, we rip it. The um, multiplication that's happening right here turns to a plus, um, and then the 4 gets plugged out front. And when I make it in this form, it makes it really easy to take the derivative of, whereas in here it would have been really, really terrible chain rule. So it's a change the way it looks before you take the derivative problem. Hopefully you're good with that. Let's do another one similar to that. Find the derivative with respect to x of, I'm going to write ln, open bracket that's tall, Put a fraction bar, write x minus 4. In the bottom, write x plus 2. Close bracket, close parentheses. Go ahead, see if you can do this one. If you, if you had trouble with that last one, hopefully you remember what the division means now, and you could do the rewrite. Pause. Here comes your answer. All right, so that division turns to a minus. I got ln of the top minus the ln of the bottom, and then I can dir that. Uh, and we just get 1 over x minus 4 minus, from here, 1 over x plus 2. Um, let's do some integration similar to this. So, hold on. We're going to start with the integral of 1 over x dx. I'm not going to tell you to pause. Just do that one. Think about what's the answer there. You know that one. That's one of our formulas. It is ln absolute value of x plus c. All right, let's do the integral of 5 over x plus 2 dx. This one, go ahead and pause. Here comes your answer. So it, sometimes it helps to move the 5 out so that we have it set up like this. The integral of the 1 over x plus 2 is going to go to the ln of the absolute value x plus 2. And the 5 comes along for the ride and is out front. If you wanted to, you could plug this thing, um, and you could write it as, and to, to be, so to be straightforward, this is a legitimate good answer, okay? Sometimes we're doing a multiple choice test, or we want to go further and do something else, and it makes sense to get rid of that 5, get that 5 out of our way. So you could also see this as ln, I'm going to open a bracket so it's clear, open parentheses, x plus 2, close to the fifth, close bracket. So both of those are good answers. Uh, it all depends on what we need to do with the answer. So let's do another one. Um, integral of 7 over x not plus minus 4 and then minus 2 over x plus 1. So before you hit pause, I want you to integrate and then I want you to plug and smash, right? So get it all into a single ln after you do your integration. So go ahead. Now you can hit pause and try it. Comes your answer. All right, so here's our answer right here. We integrate. The 7 stays in front of the x minus the ln of x minus 4. Same with the 2. The negative comes along. I'm going to plug them first. The 7 is going to pop in here and turn to this. The 2 is going to pop in and go to that. And then the minus is going to give me a fraction bar. So that fully plug and smashed version, which is going to become useful as we move along, um, is going to look like that. 
Um, all right, what do we got next? Ah, okay, so similar. I'm gonna throw some u sub into an ln. So I'm gonna give you the integral of fraction bar top 2x plus 3, bottom x squared plus 3x plus 4 with a dx on the outside. So go ahead, hit pause, and do this u sub ln problem. Comes your answer. Okay, so um, we this is like a, a u sub problem that's almost like set up for us, right? I make u equal to the bottom, du comes out to be 2x plus 3. That lines up perfectly so that I get the u in the bottom and the du in the top. You could write that in either one of these two ways here as 1 over u du or du over u, either whichever way is good for you. Then you integrate ln absolute value u plus a constant, and then ln absolute value, and I just sub this u back in right here, and we got your r plus c. All right, I'm going to have you do one more that's similar to that. So let's go ahead. We're going to do the integral fraction bar top x plus 2 bottom x squared plus 4x minus 5 um, with a dx on the outside. So I would like you to go ahead and do the u sub on this one, just like you did on the last one. It's got a little bit different piece, but totally doable. Um, hit pause. Here comes your answer. All right, so um, here the u sub I had to do a little bit of work, right? Here's my u. My du is 2x plus 4. It doesn't match that x plus 2. But we can multiply it by a half right here and get it down to be x plus 2. Probably have a little dx right here and a little dx. Um, but um, all that does is take this half right here and it replaces this. So I get a half out front. I get the integral of du over u, ln of u with the half, half here, plug the u in. And then this next step's not essential um, yet, yeah, really, here, you know, whatever. Um, but you could, if you wanted to, plug it. And remember, a half power is a root. So you could see an answer written like this, um, but this answer here is just totally fine. All right, so I am going to copy and paste this thing. So you should see that with this one, and with the previous one, this one up here, they were both set up for us to do a pretty easy u sub with the u and the du. The 2x and the 3 lined up really well with what I had in the bottom in order to integrate. Same thing down here. The x plus 2 lined up really well with this piece down here, um, and it made it so it was easy to integrate. I had to deal with the half, but that wasn't too big of a deal. So... What partial fractions does is it helps us deal with one of these when it doesn't line up the way the last two did. So, for example, I could take that 2 and change it to a 3. And then no matter how I do my u sub here, I'm going to be kind of stuck because I can only multiply on this side or divide on this side. I can't start adding things, right? I can't just do a plus 1 on this left side because it'll break order of operations with math um, and, and mess things up. Um, so I need a way to be able to deal with this plus 3, um, and that's what partial fractions is going to help us do. Um, so I'm going to stop this video here, and in the next video, I'm going to show you our strategy for doing partial fractions on this. Before I go, I'm going to scroll up just a little bit to where we started and try to get you to see where we're going with this. This thing, actually, let me copy and paste this. I'll pause. All right, so hopefully you saw me go back and grab that problem, that, this problem here that we already did earlier. Okay, what I want you to see is that this fraction right here is in the form that, it's, it's sort of like in the form that the answer of uh, that question earlier was, right? I gave it to you in this purple form and told you to smash it together into two, into a single fraction. Well, that wound up giving us this. What we need is to go 
backwards from this, because look at the purple. The purple would be integratable, okay? We just did some integrals like that. All of these, we integrated this. What I'm trying to get you to see is that if I've got two separate fractions like this, it doesn't matter what the top is, it's still integratable. I can calculate that integral because it's easy LNs. So what we want to do is take something like this and reverse it back into the original purple form. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to reverse this back into this form because then it's going to become integratable like the ones we just did. So um, in the next video, we'll talk about how to do that reverse work, and I'll try to connect it to this thing because if you understand what we did here, then you should understand how to do it backwards. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace.